All right, thanks for the request. We're going to take a quick look at how to configure SSH on a device. As you already know or are about to find out, SSH is more secure because it encrypts the session information where Telnet sends everything in the clear text. In clear text. Basically, it's the same way of doing remote administration of a box at the command line, but doing it securely. So here's the new device. We'll go into privileged mode. And from configuration mode, a couple things we need to do. We need to create an RSA public-private key pair that's used with SSH. To do that, you cannot have the host name be router. So we'll have to change the host name. So we'll change the host name to R6 because that's what this is. That's easy enough. We, besides doing the host name, we also have to have a domain name. If I tried to create this RSA public-private key pair, it would bark at me and say, eh, have to have a domain name first. So we'll fix it first with IP domain name and we'll specify INE.com. Any domain name will do. And then we're going to generate the public-private key pairs that are used, or I should say key pair, that's used for SSH communications. So we'll do a crypto key generate RSA. Um, I'm going to say general keys is used for encryption and for authentication. And I'm going to say modulus, and I'm going to specify a modulus of 1024. You know, based on your iOS version, it may default to 768, may default to 512, may default to 1024. But I like to use at least 1024. Call it a personal, um, you know, idiosyncrasy, at least 1024. So once I do that, it's going to crank this out. That could take on a slower device, you know, maybe two or three minutes on a moderate, you know, ISR router like I'm on here, just a few seconds. Now that that's created, there's a couple things we also have to do. If we do a show of the running config and we'll simply begin where the line configuration is, um, down here, the default configuration on a line is usually saying login. Um, login says, okay, great, I need a password. But if you want to use uh, SSH, you have to log in as a user. So this has already been set up. So we can just repeat the process, line VTY 0 through 4, and just say login local. We don't need to enable AAA or anything fancy, but we do need to say login local. Also, by default on the VTY lines, it's allowing. Um, Telnet in, it's allowing SSH. So if we wanted to, we could restrict it further so that only SSH is allowed. But by default, because there's no restrictions right here, Telnet and SSH are allowed in. So what have we done? Well, let's take a look. We have set up a host name, we set up the IP domain name, and we generated the public private key pairs. What else is there to do? Well, we did the login local, that's important. How about trying it out? Well, let's see if we can have Telnet work. If we Telnet, oh, we need a username. That's what we need. If we say login local, we have to have a local user created. Local refers to the configuration. So we need to create a local user. So in the config, I'll say username. I'll go Keith because I can spell that. I say spell that and I didn't. And I'll say privilege level 15. All that means is when I connect, it'll say, hey, you're at privilege level 15 and put me into privileged mode automatically. And I'll say my my password is Cisco. I could use the keyword password or the keyword secret. Secret does a little bit better as far as keeping that password more secure with the MD5 hash. So there's my local username. Let's test it out with a Telnet. We'll do SSH in a moment. So if I type in who, you notice right here I'm sitting at the console port. That little asterisk to the left indicates I'm at the console port. Fantastic. Let's Telnet. Oh, I should probably put an IP address if you want to Telnet to this box. So we'll go into interface configuration mode, FA00. And in interface configuration mode, we'll do a no shut, very important. And we'll do an IP address 10.0.0.6 with a one octet mask. Because if you don't have an IP address, you can't connect to this device. And it can't connect out. So now that's set up, I can do a telnet to myself at uh, 10.0.0.6. And boom, it's prompting me for a username. That's because of the login local that I specified. Username Keith, password Cisco. And if I type in who, it'll show me who is connected. And I'm connected uh, on VTY0. And it says I'm coming from the source address of 10006. Guess what? <laughs> I'm also going to that address. I'm basically telnetting logically to myself. So we know telnet works. And the who command simply shows you who's connected. So we'll type in exit. And a who again, just to make sure you know where I'm at. And now I'm sitting back at the console port on this device.
So, so far so good. So let's try SSH. How do you SSH from a box? That was one of the questions in the in the queue that got asked. We can simply do SSH. Oh, one other thing, before we do SSH, let's force version 2 of SSH because it is more secure. So back in global config, IP SSH version. Let's take a look what we have. Hmm, one or two? I think we'll go with two. Now that I forced version two for SSH, we've generated our key pairs and we've done login local on the V2Y lines and we've created a local user and we've verified it with Telnet. Now let's try using an SSH connection. We'll do SSH and the options here, we have a lot of cool options, but the basic ones are dash L means I want to log in as this user and the only user I have created is Keith. And then I can do a question mark again, and I can specify the hashing algorithm and the encryption algorithm, or I can accept the defaults, which I'm going to do, and I can simply put in the IP address 10.0.0.6. So what this is about to do is going to open up, from a client perspective, an SSH session to um, 10.0.0.6, which is our self, and log me in as Keith, where it should then prompt me for a password for Keith. Let's see if it works. That looks good. Put in Cisco, and we're in. Hmm. Now, how do we know it's SSH? Well, we could do a who, and that simply says that we're connected. You know, we're connected on VTY0 again, but how do we know it's SSH? We can tell it to show us. Show SSH, enter, and boom, look, I'm connected. It's SSH. I've got an inbound and outbound connection for this one session, and I'm logged in as user Keith. Hey, that's pretty cool. And we're connected. Another thing we could do is this we could do a show control plane host and let's see what options we have here let's do um, open ports by doing a show control plane host open ports it'll show us what listening ports we have on this box if you'll notice 23 is enabled because we're listening on telnet and 22 we have as a listening port because we've enabled SSH and port 22 TCP port 22 specifically is uh, what SSH uses by default. Uh, let's see if we do a show TCP. One last tip here. And there shows TCP that shows you any active TCP sessions that this box is involved with. This wouldn't be traffic going through the router, but simply any TCP sessions terminating at this router. And uh, there's the information for that. So thanks for the request on setting up SSH. A lot of fun to do, and I uh, hope you benefit from it. Have a good day.